I'm joined by Richard Smith, Executive Vice President and General Manager for EMEA Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having us. We love being here in London. And I know you've been around all of EMEA at, at many of these so far. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, been a great tour. It's, it's been a phenomenal tour. The energy, the enthusiasm, the commitment, and, and frankly, the ability to just get with customers and partners. That's I'm always the second to none. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here it all come to life. Now, here in the UK, we made a $5 billion investment. Can you tell us about that? What, what does it mean? Well, first and foremost, I mean, it's, it's a huge number, right? And I think it's representative of the opportunity here in the UK. Uh, now, it's, it's focused on many things. It's focused on helping deploy in and around the sovereign environment, helping ignite the artificial intelligence capabilities that we were talking about in the keynote, and frankly, creating a bigger, bigger industry overall, right? And as you and I know, Larry and Safra, we talk about making the market, making the industry bigger. Well, that, they're kind of putting their money right on the dime to make yeah, that happen. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, a lot of buzz about that. So I'm happy to see us do that. Now, why, why in your words, why is Oracle uniquely positioned to help customers handle all the priorities that you must be hearing as you travel around yeah. the region? We, we, uh, so, so we have a big region, you know, Europe is, it, it's a very big region. I will tell you, um, we talked about it in the keynote this morning. Firstly, we, we design and deploy for virtually any customer configuration that you can think of. Customer wants their data in the public cloud. The customer wants their data in the private cloud. They want it to sit between the two. We have an answer to every one of those, every single one. And the other thing that's quite really unique about us for is we have the stack whether you start at the data layer, which is that golden nugget of power, all the way through to the application space. Frankly, you, you know, I'm, and I'm very proud of it as, a, as an Oracle leader, but frankly, I think we're, we have an incredible story that's frankly unbeatable. Yeah, and, and the cloud part is so, so incredible because we, we kind of started late. We can call it a Gen 2 cloud, but we thought we were, that gave us the advantage of hearing what customers wanted and building that rather than, you know, one size fits all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So AI, you yeah. must have heard that as you travel a around. couple of times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, why is Oracle such a trusted partner um, and becoming more and more so by the day from customers with AI? Well, again, frankly, very, very similar story. All right. It starts with data. Right. Oracle's heritage, you know, from out from day one is all about data, data and security, by the way, which is another really critical element of it. The other thing is, you know, you don't need to move your data and move it to different places within the Oracle domain. The fact is, you know, and, and Larry talks about this passionately, as, as, as we all do, you have the data, you keep it in the same place, you modernize it through technologies like 23AI, and you vectorize it, it's available and delivers value at speed and pace. You don't have to go and do all kinds of complex things to actually achieve that same inherent value, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I think people, people sleep on the security part too, yeah. you know, but our customers don't. Yeah. <laughs> and so that becomes very, very important. Now, in a bit, I'm gonna talk to Raj about yeah. uh, the cloud um, and Hassan about data platforms, um, but I'm wondering on the cloud, we talked about all the choice we're giving. How are how do you find customers responding to that? You, you know what? I, well, first and foremost, the the demand is phenomenal, phenomenal. You, I mean, we saw it in our recent earnings. Now, yeah. RPO of one hundred thirty billion dollars yes. is indicative of the demand. So, and and it's consistent. You know, wherever you go, whether here in the UK, whether across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, there is demand for the Oracle value proposition. But I tell you the other thing, and again, that really, really plays for us is the fact that we are so security conscious. We are maniacally security conscious. We deployed the sovereign cloud in, in uh, parts of EMEA. As soon as we deployed it, actually it filled up. Now we have to expand it again. So, right. I, I mean, if, if I sound excited, it, you know, it's not because I've had too much coffee. It's just <laughs> the demand is real. It's very genuine. Yeah. And we I was talking with uh, one of our customers, Morrison's, about, you know, th it took them a, a long time to move to the cloud, you know, and you hear these stories, BMP Paribas yeah. is another one that you've brought up before. And, you know, it's so 
it's sort of refreshing to see that people get there and then they go, oh, there's all this other stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Absolute. So, so that's exciting. So let's go back to um, our heritage data for a second. And, and uh, we've talked to Hassan. Hassan um, had his keynote as well. You know, we've been doing it for 47 years. <laughs> um, and I think people kind of fell asleep on that a little bit, too. And then yep. all of a sudden it became a lot more important. How are you seeing customers respond to our unified database strategy, um, our ability to bring AI directly into it? Well, I, I, again, a couple of things. So, I mean, you pointed it out, right? Our heritage has always been about data. Our first project was with the CIA, right? So, right. so I mean, we're pretty good at it. Yeah. What, what, I, what I would tell you, first and foremost, so the unified data strategy is, again, about having the data in the right place at the right time without having to do unique or, or abstract things to derive value from it. The other thing that we've been doing here is we have this phenomenal multi-cloud strategy, right? right? So we said, hey, look, you just don't, you can't do this just with one vendor and insist that that's where you've got to be. You know, we had Lloyd's on stage earlier talking about the fact that he's now, he doesn't have to make a decision about where the data resides. He makes business decisions. We've enabled that through our strategy. Yeah, and, and we're seeing more and more customers get on board with that as well. I mean, yeah. that, that, that ability to offer choice, run the thing, make the choices they want to make for whatever the workloads yeah. are, including their database, are really an advantage. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, we got to wrap up here. Sure. But um, w as you look out towards some of the next cities and as we head into our next fiscal year, what are you seeing as, as the momentum behind the business? Okay. Well, I mean, we've, we've already talked about demand. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's very real. <clears throat> what I'm also seeing here is the rate and pace at which customers are looking to derive and develop AI. It's moved from project-oriented AI into organizational-driven AI, where people are making courageous decisions and courageous discussions to really deploy AI at scale. So for me, that's a big part of where I think we head into the next year. I, I thought what the Baroness said was, was it's scan, um, scan and then something and then scale. Um, scan, plan and scale, yeah. something like that. It was, okay, yeah. that's what I hear customers talking about. Absolutely. So thank you so much for having us here and for joining us on Oracle TV. Thanks so much, Fritz.